All right, uh, this is a tutorial on Blender Physics Fluid Simulation. Uh, my last tutorial I did, I thought was pretty good, but uh, apparently uh, the audio was really messed up. So I'm redoing this, and uh, hopefully I can go through it all all over again and uh, give you a good uh, tutorial here. Uh, just so that uh, I let everybody know, I am using uh, Ubuntu Linux 12.04. Uh, uh, Blender 2.63 and to do the screen capture I am using FFmpeg um, to to record so let's get started um, I'm Oster Grimm and uh, I was asked to do this tutorial um, because I did some uh, uh, fluid simulations and I posted them to YouTube and uh, I guess a lot of people actually kinda liked them and um, I was asked to to show how I did it and what to do and how to use the simulator so here it is. Um, this is a scene that I've created here. Um, the first thing I want to kind of go into about my scene is the world sky. These are basic settings in Blender with cycles. I have it set as the, the surface background and a sky texture. And that just gives a, a nice, um, get a good view here that you can see. It gives it a nice little... Uh, look of a, a sun in the, the the sky and give some some atmosphere to the to the scene. Um, so that's pretty much that. Um, my buildings here are just cubes with a diffuse white. So same with the uh, the, the floor scape here. That's just a diffuse white. Um, all pretty simple. And I'll go into wireframe mode back here. Um, three major parts of the fluid simulator you need to, to pay attention to is there are these three major parts. The domain. The domain is um, a boundary box. It's this box that you can see uh, right here. Uh, that is the world that the fluid exists in. That means that the simulator can see only this, uh, what exists with inside this domain and that's where it will generate fluid, that's where it will react with the fluid, and that's, uh, that's all it can deal with. It has no idea about anything outside of this. It only works with what's inside of the domain. The, the domain is required because if you didn't have the domain, the calculation area would be so large that you wouldn't get any... Um, you wouldn't get any good results within a good period of time. Um, so if the f the domain was too large for example my fluid would just run off my scene and, and end up going into nothingness and we can't have that because that would just take way too long to, to process so that's the domain um, the next major object is your fluid object um, there are a few different types of fluid objects um, one is a fluid one is an inflow and one is an outflow there are some others but these are the uh, the three I want to talk about right now. A fluid is, um, well, I'll say this. This object itself is the starting dimensions for my fluid. An inf, um, actually, a fluid uh, type of fluid would just be this cube, uh, or the, wa the fluid in the dimensions of this cube, dropping into the scene, reacting with gravity, reacting with other uh, items in the scene. An inflow is what I like to refer to as a magical pipe from the fifth dimension that keeps pumping water into the scene. Now, if you think about Blender, uh, the world you work with here uh, and you render with, um, that's all within three dimensions, right? And is generated into a two-dimensional plane on your screen. Um, and you've got a fourth dimension here, which is time. So from the fifth dimension water magically pumps from this pipe into your scene. That's what an inflow does. And you have the exact opposite with an outflow. You can create a drain back into the fifth dimension and uh, pump water out of your scene or drain water out of the scene. Uh, what an inflow can do is actually you have some, some initial velocities. Uh, I've got this set at an x of 5 and a z of negative 1. Um, x of 5, if you follow your directional guides right here, uh, the line is going in the positive direction. So my x of 5 is going 5 this way. And z of negative 1, as z is positive up, 
you're going to go negative, which is down. So my water is going to come in and down and uh, start flowing into my scene here. And from where the camera sits, it would go like this. And, and if you can see my mouse uh, this way and, and come into the scene. Um, so that's that's the first thing, um, the first two things. Now the last thing I want to talk about is other objects. You want to set these up as obstacles. And <coughs> excuse me, what obstacles are are objects that can interact with your fluid. Um, for example, these obstacles are in my uh, original scene are meant to be like building uh, buildings or represent buildings, and I've got a floor obstacle. Um, within obstacles, you have really one uh, major item you can change. You can change the volume initialization, but that's not something I want to talk about. Uh, the major thing I want you to notice is the slip type. What the slip type is, is how the fluid reacts with this obstacle. That is, um, I have it set as a partial slip. That means the water can react to it, it can stick to it a bit, and then it will fall down and slide down or slip down and it will react in a way that is uh, indicative of real water. So if you had sprayed water onto uh, a wall, you'd notice that, wa that water would drip down instead of just bouncing right off. So that's what um, uh, the slip type is. So I've got a, slip, a partial slip for these uh, building type objects and on my floor I've got what is no slip. Now no slip is if you had sprayed water onto a surface and that surface just attracted that water and the water did not move, that's what no slip does. Um, I used it for the floor because I wanted water to not be able to recede away from the camera. I wanted water to just come in and continue coming in and keep flowing along the water, the, the, um, the floor path. And that's, uh, that helped with, with controlling that. Um, one other place you have the ability to change slip is in the domain itself. The domain boundary. I set this to a free slip because if I had set it to a partial slip, if you think back about spraying water onto a wall, um, if I had set a partial slip on my domain boundary, the partial slip would, if you think about it, spraying water onto your wall or onto your ceiling with a spray gun, water will drip down from that. I didn't want water to, to interact with my domain boundary in that way. So I have a free slip, so that means it will bounce right back as if it hit nothing, uh, nothing in the real world. So it does uh, affect my scene a bit. If you do see your water hitting the boundary, you may want to recount, reconsider the size of your boundary and rebake uh, as you go along. So if you see that, you just can pay attention to it. I did see it in my uh, my final render, but I didn't care about it because it just it didn't matter to me. It was just a quick uh, test. So that's what that is. Um, let's see, I've got the slip. So okay, quick quickly the textures. Um, the fluid itself actually is the domain. So when you render your fluid, I'll show you in a second here. When you render your fluid, the domain physically becomes the fluid object itself. This object can be removed from your scene if it is in your scene and you and it's reflecting or it's doing something within your scene that you don't like. You can remove that object. Just make sure the domain still is there. And I'll show you what happens. With my domain selected, you can see now the domain is the water or the, f the fluid in my scene. So when, I, when you work with a fluid, you want to set the actual the domain to be the texture of your fluid. And in this case, I was going for a water, which I used a glass with a color of white with an index of refractivity of a 1.33, which is close to water. And uh, that generated a... Uh, a water-like texture on my domain. Now I can actually go back to frame zero here and you will see that my domain oh, let's go back to frame zero frame zero and the domain is fully underwater or the entire scene is fully underwater because the domain is existing uh, around it and is water but as soon as I go to frame one 
the domain is removed and is made as the uh, the uh, liquid itself. So that's that. Um, make sure you use the the um, your material on the domain, not on your fluid object. That's it's kind of a big tricky one there, but uh, it's easy to to take care of. So I'm just going to go into the domain settings here so we can go over uh, what they do. Um, go from the top down. Uh, resolution. The resolution is, of course, how uh, good your water looks. Um, it starts, <coughs> I believe the default is 65, and I upped this to 256 because I wanted a really good looking water, and I'll show you the difference in a minute. And the preview of 45. The preview doesn't really matter because that's just what you're going to see in your viewport. Um, and you're going to render with the final resolution here. Uh, what that does is actually does two complete different bakes uh, when it's baking this whole uh, uh, result. That means it is doing the preview and the final at the same time. So the less you have of a preview, it will uh, help with your bake. It will make it run a little bit faster. But also... Uh, the higher the resolution, the longer it will take. Uh, so on, on both of them. So I'll show you the difference in resolution in a second. Let's see if we can get a good frame here. 38 looks good. Um, so under viewport display, you can tell it whether you want it to to display the preview or display the final or the geometry. The geometry will just display a, the boundary box. That's it. Um, and we've got it at preview right now, and you can see how it looks, uh, which isn't too bad but we want to see what it looks like as a final and you can see that it's really particle uh, particleized and uh, you get a lot of uh, fluidic effects to it so that's what you get as the final uh, render I'll go back to preview and you can see it and then the final again so this is what will be rendered as the final so the one major thing or another major thing there's all major things uh, with the domain is you want to make sure your time is set properly. I've got a start of 0 seconds and an end of 10.41 seconds. The reason for that is because under my scene here I've got a frame range of start frame of 1, end frame of 250 and a frame rate of 24 frames per second. 250 frames at 24 frames per second is about 10.41 seconds. And if you keep your time accurate, the water will look realistic. You can adjust the time to make it so that if you're doing a high-speed film kind of effect, you can now have uh, within a hundred frames, you can have you know a half of a second exist. That means you can have um, your uh, you can have what what appears to be a high speed or even a time lapse if you want to go the other way. Um, I hope that explains it to you. You just want to make sure this is accurate if you want to make a realistic scene of water fluid. Um, I did adjust the speed. I put it up to 1.2 because that does affect how the water acts within the scene. Um, so I wanted the water to kind of rush in and make it look a little bit faster than it, than it normally does. And that's what the 1.2 for speed does. It kind of speeds it up and makes it a little bit higher speed film kind of an effect and uh, really gives it some some... Uh, edginess and flow to it and, and just crashes the 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 water against against the objects and I really liked it um, so going down a little bit further um, oh before I get too further uh, we want to talk about the cache fluid this directory uh, you need to make sure you don't have it in a temporary folder if you do and you close out a blender and you reboot your computer uh, especially in Linux here um, that temporary folder can and probably will be erased and your entire bake will be destroyed. So make sure you put that folder within uh, a folder uh, with your scene, the blend file, so that you can keep that along with it because that is all the, the results here of this fluid. And uh, if you don't have that, that fluid goes away and you have to rebake it all over again. And a, a bake can take a, an hour to two hours or longer depending on your settings. So going down, take that out. Um, so going down to the domain world, we've got viscosity. By default, viscosity of water is base of one, exponent of six. 
you also have some other defaults here, honey and oil. Uh, honey is a pretty thick viscosity, and that would be a base of 3 with an exponent of 2 or something like that. And that would just be the thickness of the fluid. Water is pretty thin. Oil is somewhat thin. Honey is really thick. Um, you can change your viscosity, which I did, um, for the fluid. I'll tell you why I changed it a little bit. But uh, just just understand that water is a base of 1 and exponent of 6. This is actually negative exponent, so you're talking about a base of uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Uh, is actually the real viscosity of water. And then the, the honey is 0, 0, 003. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a minute. The real world size. Uh, when we talk about real world size within the fluid simulation, you're talking about the size of the domain from the largest edge. Um, 10 meters is the largest you can go. If you're dropping water, for example, into a cup of water, or into a thimble or something really small you want to make sure that this real world size is re reflects how big your scene is um, within the longest edge here uh, so that that should uh, really affect things I set it up to 10 meters because I know this isn't really 10 meters long but it's uh, the largest it could go and this is why I changed the viscosity a little bit lower when you get to a higher um, when you look at a larger body of water, water appears to be a fluid with less viscosity than if you looked at um, water at a closer uh, a, cl a closer look at water. Um, that is because um, water appears to be less viscous um, just because of surface tension. There's a certain amount of surface tension that water has that... Um, allows it to look a little bit less viscous, actually a lot less viscous when you get further away from it. So changing the real world size to its largest and then starting to change your viscosity allows it to make it look like it's a bigger scene than it really is. So that really helps out with, with my crashing effects um, that I got in the scene. Uh, the domain boundary, you, when you talk about the surface here, we're talking about the smoothness of the domain uh, the um, the water, uh, how smooth it appears in the scene, and you've got the subdivisions. If you've worked with uh, Blender before, you know the smoothing and sp subdivision. Smoothing is the angle of the the vertices, and the subdivisions is the roundness of the vertices. Basically, uh, it's hard to really describe that. I don't know why, but uh, if you if you played with Blender enough, you you understand uh, what subdivisions are, how they re react to an object, and what they can do. Um, so out of that, last object here, or last thing here is the domain particles. Domain particles are really great, um, and I'll show you again with my final view here. All of these little crashing effects, these little dots, these are all the domain particles. Um, you just kind of have to play with it. I got a tracer particles of 2 and generate of 0.4. That looked fairly realistic for my scene. You may want to up that. You may want to decrease it depending on the, the size of your scene. Just figure out what you like. So once you've done and you've gone and set that all up, make sure you save your file. Um, I can't stress that enough. I've done it a few times and it's really annoying when you click bake and Blender just dies. It's no fun at all. Uh, so make sure you save before you start baking. One small thing I have noticed. I've gotten the required memory up to about 400 megabytes or a little bit above that, and Blender just crashed. It doesn't like anything above about 400 megabytes. doesn't matter how much memory you have on your system. It just doesn't like it. I've got about 16 megs here on my system. 16 megs. 16 gigs on my system. And, uh, you know... 400 megs is nothing compared to that. Uh, so I made sure I kind of dropped it back down a little bit. The required memory is affected by your resolution. It's affected by your subdivisions, your smoothing. It's affected by the particles. Um, and it's affected by your domain size here. The bigger this box, the more memory it's going to re be required to generate. 
So that's what all affects that. Um, once it's done uh, baking, you'll have a really huge folder. And I'll go in here and show you my flood animation cache folder. We've got 21.4 gigabytes in here. That doesn't sound right. It probably is. 21.4 gigabytes of just fluid dynamics uh, for this render. That's to me is a lot, but uh, I know it's actually not that large. You can have larger ones. So just understand that it does gain in size really quickly. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll get to a nice frame here that might look pretty good rendered real quick. Go to the uh, viewport display of final. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Yeah, there we go. We'll render this one real quickly as I can. And once that renders, I'll then go ahead and pull up the final video here. So, I mean, I hope this really explains everything that I can. Um, I think I've really talked about everything that I can think of. Um, yeah, here's the final render of that scene. Looks really good. I like the crashing effect. Oh, uh, some camera effects I've put in here is some depth of field. Um, I've got it set for like this cube right here is the the focal point, and then it just it blurs out everything else, which is really neat. Gives it a nice effect. Um, so let's go back to the file manager here. Open another one, and we will pull up. blenders flood animation and this is the final one that I did for this scene so there it is I like the crashing effect that comes in and just then starts to fill up the scene and that was the whole entire effect that I really wanted was to just crash into the camera and uh, fill the scene and you know really make that look just really nice comes in So that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please let me know. I, I really want to hear what you have to say. Um, and, you know, let me know how, how it looks, what, what you can do with it. If you have something that you can create in Blender and you have a scene that you like, um, go ahead and, and uh, make something and, and respond to my video with, with, the, with your comments and your videos. I'd love to see them. I'd love to uh, hear your input. Um, just let me know. And... Uh, if you have any questions, just drop me a line so or comment on the video. Thanks a lot.